Hi guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Now, uh, some of you will remember that I did an unboxing of this shield uh, a few weeks ago, I think about a month ago, something like that now. I've been using it quite a bit since, and one of the topics that came up in conversation after I received this was the issue of size. Um, now, I was fairly sure at that point that um, back in the recesses of my studies of, of Dark Age weapons, that I recalled that there were a range of sizes that were actually found on surviving or archaeological ar archaeological sites where you could tell the size of shields and indeed surviving shields uh, that showed that there weren't just a size of shield there wasn't necessarily a right or a wrong size for an Anglo-Saxon shield and um, since that time, since I made my last video on the topic, I have actually been doing some research on this. Now, just before I put this down, I will just state at the beginning, this is, I've just measured it, it's 61 centimetres across, okay? So its diameter is 61 centimetres. And quite a few people said that, oh, that's too small, um, you can't use it like a boss-held boss shield is supposed to be used. Um, Roland Vorchecker, I know, uh, and I should mention at this point, I know Roland well, we uh, communicate and we've known each other for years, we've both been teaching at HEMA, HEMA events, in some cases the same HEMA events for many, many years, and I know Roland and I class him as a mate. Um, and I know that Roland is a big fan of large shields, but I also know that Roland is uh, a, very, um, a very precise and exacting student of Dark Age weapons and, and armour and um, and he will probably, I hope, agree with uh, quite a bit that I'm going to say in this video. And whilst it is true that large shields certainly existed, um, and I'll talk a little bit about large shields in a minute, um, it is incorrect to say that it is wrong to have a boss held shield that is of this size. This is 61 centimetres. I'll use metric for this video. I'm sure some of you will find that a relief rather than my usual inches. The reason I'm using metric is because the book I'm about to refer to predominantly uses metric. Um, I prefer inches, but hey-ho. So, I have been studying this book. Okay, so it is uh, Early Anglo-Saxon Shields by Tanya Dickinson and Heinrich Harker. Um, both of whom are pretty famous archaeologists, particularly specialised in the Anglo-Saxon and Viking era. Um, so the first thing I should say is this is obviously fairly specific to Anglo-Saxon shields and early Anglo-Saxon shields. Uh, by early, they're mostly looking at 5th to 7th century. Okay, So we're talking about pre-Viking here. Um, However, uh, it is obviously relevant to the early uh, Germanic period and the period in which this type of shield did reign supreme before the strapped type of shields, like this, there we go, before things like that came along. Okay, so <laughs> I'm surrounded by shields here. Um, so yes, yeah, so I started uh, looking at this book and it, I have to say it's a brilliant book, it's not easy to get a hold of, I found it on uh, <coughs> an antiquarian uh, bookseller's website but equally you might be able to find it <coughs> through uh, things like ABE books or maybe even eBay. Um, so it is a good book, it's not particularly thick but it's got a lot of data in it and there isn't really, as far as I'm aware, there is no other book really which covers this topic in anywhere near this level of detail. Um, it's got lots of stats in here, and I like stats, okay? Um, so, here we go. I have pulled up, first first page I've pulled up is, let's hope you can see this relatively clearly, what we have here is essentially a sort of graph, okay? And this plots approximately 100, in fact over 100, between 100 and 100 and, uh, 110, thereabouts, um, shields where it was possible to measure the diameter from the grave. So the first thing to say is that Anglo-Saxon graves of the 5th to the 7th century, a certain proportion of usually the men and very occasionally the women were buried with um, weapons. Um, very often a spear, relatively often a shield, and usually the shield boss remains and obviously the wood rots away, uh, and occasionally things like saxes, swords, Francisca axes, Angon throwing spears, other weapons essentially, but the spear and the shield are the most common weapons to find in the graves that contain weapons, and not all of the graves contain weapons, but a, a fairly large percentage, well, you know, sort of 
50% uh, or, or up to thereabouts, 40-50% in many cases, um, did contain weapons. Um, now, as I mentioned, the boss, the steel boss, that is the metal bit in the middle of the shield, is the thing that often remains in the grave. However, the wood obviously rots away. However, one of the things you learn in archaeology, one of the things that I was first taught in archaeology, is obviously to look at the uh, colour of the soil, the contrasting colours of soil. And uh, Generally speaking, you can see a shape in the soil where the shield was. Now, the shield wasn't always laid flat. The shield was sometimes, although rarely, lent up against the side of the um, of the hole in the ground where the person's buried in, of the grave. Sometimes the shield was lent up against the side. Sometimes it was laid on the person. Sometimes it was laid next to the person and so on. So there is variation. And for that reason and soil conditions and various other reasons, you cannot always, although you might have a shield boss, you cannot always see the potential diameter of the shield. However, in um, they've taken a sample of just over 100, 110 uh, cases. It was possible to estimate the diameter of the shield. And if we look at the uh, measurements here, you'll see that they've put maximum diameters, because obviously there's um, an element of human interpretation regarding the, the soil colour. Um, and if you take the maximum diameters, you'll see that the thickest part of the graph is centred on... 60 centimetres! <laughs> the same size as my shield. And I assure you that is pretty much coincidental because I bought that shield blind. I decided I wanted something a bit smaller than the shields I did previously, which were more like 80 or 90 centimetres, so I got a 60 centimetre one. As it turns out, that's about the size, an average size, for a maximum estimate of a um, early Anglo-Saxon shield. You'll notice it does go up to 90 centimetres, I'll talk about that in a minute, but it does go down uh, to around 30 centimetres. Now, if we go down to the bottom of this graph here, you'll notice this is the minimum diameter. So, say for example we're looking at one dark mark in the soil, what they've done is they've gone, okay, at maximum that might be 65 centimetres, at minimum it might be 58 centimetres. And so they've plotted both of those things on this graph. So if we take the minimum diameters, you'll notice it's actually centred around between 40 and 50 centimetres. Really quite small we're getting now. And it goes all the way down to about 25 um, centimetres, which is really like a large buckler. It's really a buckler, it's not even a shield. So what we're seeing there, and although it does stretch up to, even on the minimum ones it only goes up to 60 centimetres, on the maximum estimates it goes up to 90 centimetres. Um, and again, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so we're really seeing a concentration around 50, 60 centimetres. It's really quite small, and this is the early Anglo-Saxon period, but nevertheless, that's smaller than a lot of people would probably assume or think they know about the size of shields of this period. If we just look over here, this is actually a list at the side here of specific shields from uh, very specific sites, and we've got 42 centimetres, 45, 46, 46, 49, 49, 50, 52, 52, 53, 56, 57, 60, 60, 61, 61, 61, 62, 64, 66. You see the pattern, okay? So there's lots of shields from this early Anglo Saxon period that are 65 centimetres all the way down to about 45 centimetres seems to be quite common. 45 centimetres to 65 centimetres. Quite small, about the size actually of a Highland Taj. Um, and yes indeed, there are a couple of examples which are 90 centimetres and there we have 92 centimetres and it is Sutton Hoo. There we go. So the Sutton Hoo shield is very famous but you should never consider the Sutton Hoo shield in any way typical for a um, for an Anglo-Saxon shield, even of the 7th century. First of all, it's covered in gold and, and decoration, um, but it's massive, it's really, really big. Uh, it's not typical at all. So there we go, Those are quite small sizes. Um, I've also attached some bits of paper. Another thing I would quickly mention, um, I don't want to dwell on this too much in this video, but many people talk about lime wood or linden wood used for shields. In actual fact, in this book, they've actually done some stats uh, study based on the type of wood, where they could tell the type of wood that shield was made of. And actually, it seems that alder wood and willow wood were both the most common, pretty much, 
Um, Limewood, although it was there, it was present in the archaeological record, wasn't actually very common. Um, and uh, there was, surprisingly, examples of both ash and oak, which are both relatively heavy and hard woods. Not, you wouldn't think that they're really suited to making shields, because uh, they're kind of on the heavy side. Um, they were uncommon, but interestingly, they were as uncommon as limewood, as lindenwood, despite the fact that lindenwood is mentioned in lots of, of the early texts. Kind of strange, kind of surprising. So there we go. Alder, willow, and I must say poplar. Poplar is apparently similar to willow, um, or perhaps difficult to tell the difference between willow and poplar. So willow, poplar and alder, and one the unifying feature of those three woods, apart from the fact that they were apparently all very common in early Anglo-Saxon shields, is that they're light. For their, for their size, they're light, so they're really concentrating on trying to make these shields light. Another bit of evidence for that is if we look at the thickness of the boards, where it's possible to tell the thickness of the boards from rivets and such like, we can actually tell that the shields were thicker uh, between 8mm and 12mm at the centre, where they're attached to the boss, and they they actually planed them down, the planks down, so they get thinner towards the edge. So unlike, just put down the book for a second, unlike a plank of plywood, obviously they were made of, of planks of wood that were attached together, uh, and they were then bound around the edge, usually with a leather um, surround like this. But they're actually much thicker here, and get thinner and thinner out here. So they're really, much like distal taper on a sword, they're really looking at making the shield as light and therefore as quick as they possibly can do. Okay, so there's the wood. And finally, the other thing I want to say, going back to the topic of size of shields, is actually if we look at some of the iconic evidence, iconographic evidence rather, so this is a this is from Vendel, picture of um, some warriors, there we go, with in, in combat with their shields. You notice actually the shields are quite small. They're not shown big, they're not shown covering the whole person's torso. These are early uh, early Dark Age, um, so what are you talking about, 7th century. Um, they are small shields that correspond to some of the measurements I've just reeled off. And there, if we look at the Frank's casket, very famous from the very front of the book, where we've got some guys both with their shields held side on and front on against a load of arrows being shot at them. And look at the size of those shields. These are not big shields. Uh, these are essentially like they look to be the size of a Highland Taj, which is even smaller than this. So there we go, guys. Um, I recommend you get, if you're interested in this topic, get hold of this book, Early Anglo-Saxon Shields. It's very interesting. There are some other books I'll probably talk about which cover similar topics to this in, in future videos. But uh, it turns out, hey-ho, whatever modern people say about the size of Viking shields or the size of Anglo-Saxon shields, in the early Anglo-Saxon period, 60 centimetres was apparently average. You were Mr. Average if you had 60 centimetres. And it wouldn't have been unusual to have a shield like this as small as 45 centimetres across. According to the archaeological record, across 100 uh, over a hundred samples taken, apparently lots of Anglo-Saxon shields were only between 45 and 65 centimetres across. There we go, you heard it first here. Cheers guys!